Okay, so my name is BDF44, as you guys probably know if you've watched any of my videos. Thank you for clicking on it, by the way. And I literally just turned the camera on after the exact moment where a topic came to mind. Um, so with everything that's going on socially and with all of the different uh, images and narratives that we're seeing about one another, I felt that my perspective growing up first half of my childhood more or less till I was about I'd say 10 11 I grew up in Hollywood California some of y'all may have already seen in another video I may have talked about this I grew up in Hollywood like Hollywood Boulevard was one of the earliest memories of my life was seeing tourists on Hollywood Boulevard like that it's funny when you grow up in a place like that um you know that people come there from all over the world. They dream to come there. I was aware of that. It's about as early as a thought in my mind. I knew that people were coming from everywhere to come to my home and just to be there for the movie star atmosphere and all that. It was so so very vivid. And in, in Hollywood, predominantly the uh, race of people that I saw was, of course, Hispanic people. And they have a very strong, predominant Armenian culture in the area that I was in see a couple black folks we'd be around but you you're not it's not a black neighborhood by any stretch of the imagination um and you know we see asian people and just, you know like i said tourists come in so you see everybody but i'm talking about people who live there people you go to school with the elementary school i went to was was predominantly hispanic and armenian so it wasn't a whole lot of black people around and because of it i had my own understanding or misunderstanding about who we were and i felt like that perspective needed to be reflected upon in this video to help others understand that I understand how it feels to see us as them because I hear a lot of people's perspectives and they 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 automatically jump to the worst conclusions about African Americans they automatically look at us as as, as uh, tough guys in some cases they look at our women as strong people who don't need comforting you know if you if you need to lay down your burdens you can go to the black woman if you need to uh if, if you want to uh bring forth some sass on your tv show you put a black woman on there with a lot of attitude like that's just these stereotypes they they they're represented in some cases you're going to see people who who embody stereotypes of course in every race but it, i think it's become a problem for us in regards to how we are in inner not how we interact but how we are interacted with and how we are viewed before we get a chance to display who we are to to, to strangers um some of the looks that you get just being a black person versus the looks that you would see others receive uh from very same people upon first seeing them it's just it's telling you know it's it's a it's a great deal of apprehension that comes with just being uh in the presence of african americans when you don't know them and when you're buying into uh, those stereotypes and I just for me I used to like literally feel I guess I don't know have the words for it but like outside of my mother of course and, and, and family members people that I would spend real time with when I would be around black folks particularly black folks from from like the church I would go to because my mother went to a black church growing up so like that would be our opportunity to to, to kind of see our people a lot. Go to uh, Maranatha uh, Church in, in Crenshaw. So I was I was very much uh, part of the church, and, and that was that would be when I'd see our people. That would be when I'd see people that I didn't wasn't related to who happened to be black and, and get a taste of the culture, get a, a taste of the flavor, get a taste of the of the energy and, and and the vibes. And you know, it was like when I thought about people who were in who were like maybe for example individuals that i i viewed as gang members or individuals that i thought as as as, as hardcore it would be like an anxiety about us i remember when i first like left elementary school um graduated from elementary school spent a year at private school not even a year a half a, a semester in private school left that and went to bancroft bancroft middle school um which is in like the west hollywood area and that was a predominantly black school uh, for a time. I don't know if it still is, but at the time when I got there, it was. And I just remember the anxiety that I felt 
thinking that I wasn't adequate in the, in the, in the, in the space uh, of African Americans that seemed to be from the hood, you know what I mean? Like, my mindset was not that I belonged around them, or that they were tougher than me, that they would run through me like, like it would be easy to do, you know? I didn't consider myself a very strong person, and I didn't consider myself uh, somebody who could, who, could, who could stand a chance as a, ch- as a child, you know? Like, I really didn't. And, you know, I, I wasn't a tough kid by any stretch of the imagination, but my perception of our people was that as if I was to be uh, afraid of them or apprehensive of them or think that the worst of them because I was buying into the propaganda that, 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 that was being told to me about my very own people and wasn't spending enough time with them. So I said that to say, of course, I grew out of that as I started to, to be at Bancroft and hang out with more people that look like me, gathering friendships, starting to see just different, you know, faces, and, and that would kind of erase some of those stereotypes and some of that anxiety. Um, and get to know some people, and and the flip side of that, unfortunately, was that I was getting teased quite a bit by people who weren't black, by uh, Hispanic friends, or not friends, but people that would team school school classmates or whatever, It'd be Hispanic, Armenian. I would get made fun of by a lot of different types of people. So it made me realize that for my own self, I was told to fear my people, but it wasn't my people that was really causing me in my personal life any drama or any any trauma. Um, and so it started to become a situation where it's like, okay, you just pick your friends, you know what I mean? You're not looking at them saying, okay, they're black, they're gang members, they ain't going, they're not going to accept you. It's more so, okay, who is this, who is this, who is this? Oh, okay, we get along. Oh, you happen to be black? Great. And then you start growing up and you just grow out of that. You start being more a part of the culture. You start being more part of hip hop. You start having friends that, that change. You know, some of my friends who used to be kind of square like me, they started gang banging. They started getting involved in different things. And you just grow up, you know, and, and all of that nonsense starts to go away and you start to, to inherit a pride about yourself, you know. Started finding myself in places where um, I would have been afraid to go beforehand you know when I was like 16 years old I was going down to uh, if you know LA South Central 111th place in Broadway every day after after work because I was working during the summertime and I would go catch a bus go all the way down there and just you know visit my little girlfriend spend as much time as I possibly could before the last train and I would take the train all the way from there all the way home walking through that area which is uh, really 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 raw it's uh, you know, it's a lot of respect over there <laughs> for for your surroundings. You understand that 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 that's that's real. That's real living over there for people who who don't have a whole lot. And, um, so it was one of those situations where it was like, yo, at that time I started really understanding, like, nah, like I don't have to feel that way, you know. Like I can go to some of these places where some some individuals who happen to be gang members are, and I, I you know, it's not the end of the world for me. It wasn't like I'm automatically getting getting the worst uh, of 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 of, uh, of luck or whatever. So that's when I started becoming a little more confident in myself, um, having more pride in who I was, I am, and and started seeing myself as a part of the community. But that didn't come early for me, uh, as it does for for a lot of African Americans. It didn't, and because of it, it's allowed me some perspective and some comfort in the presence of people who don't look like me. And, 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 and I grew up in a, in a space where I respected people just as human beings rather than uh, looking at them, labeling them, and then trying to figure out if I, can, if I can be in their presence like I was thinking early on. So I just I say all this, I make a video like this just to share an understanding. Like, look, you who are not black who look at me and say, yo, I don't know, or those who have anxiety about African Americans, you have to understand that... A lot of us were fed that too. A lot of us look at one another the same way you look at us. I think the difference is that we know that we represent ourselves whatever it is that they aren't in our minds. You know what I mean? Like that's how it is. So we know that there's a possibility of not all of us being that way because we are not that way, whatever that way may be. You know what I mean? But it it just speaks to to the... images that have been you know thrown in our faces about who black people are images 
that we have seen of black people being murderers and savages and ultimately destroyers and conquerors or what have you, that doesn't really represent the people that I've known in my life. It doesn't represent who I am. That's not to say that some individuals don't exist, but you don't have to have anxiety in the presence of every African-American male or every African-American female that you meet. I know that there's a lot of words going around, a lot of jargon going around about how black people are out to get white people right now. And, you know, I'm not a naive individual. Sure, there's some black people out here who would love to put their hands around anybody's throat that happens to be white, just off the strength of the circumstances that we're dealing with. But not, not everybody and not a lot of us. I don't, I don't think that makes up a majority of individuals. You're going to have extremists no matter where you go. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I think what we all need to fight against, all of us, everyone, is believing that all of any group is one way. Just because they share a culture or because they share uh, uh, agreements about certain topics. I, I, I have learned that viewing especially people of your own race um, in, a, in a space of fear is really, really toxic for your upbringing. It's really, really toxic for, for, for how you represent yourself in the presence of people that don't look like you. And, you know, it, it, it has an effect on that somehow. And, and two, you find yourself, and I speak for myself, uh, respecting and showing a certain level of respect to people who may be Caucasian, that you won't show to African Americans um, a certain level of comfort level not necessarily comfort in the sense that you'll speak freely but a comfort level thinking that you're more so safe in the presence of, of white people than you are in the presence of black people and, and those, are, those are misconceptions about character um, not to say that we are not safe in the presence of whomever or whatever but the point is there's good and bad in every group and there's no guarantee that you're safe or not safe no matter what the circumstances may appear to be uh, as it pertains to race and, and in the groups of, of people who may not look like you. So that's what I'm here to say, man. I, I was in that space where I used to fear my people. I grew to know people that look like me. I grew to love people that look like me and I grew to have pride in loving myself. And I, I say all that to say that if I could be black and feel that way, then there is some, 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 some somewhere in this conversation where those who aren't black can probably hear what I have to say in this regard and say, you know what, well, if he came to that conclusion, maybe I can come to a similar conclusion about some people, uh, maybe in my own race or maybe black people, but you can come to a conclusion that you don't have to buy into the stereotypes or the images or the, or the different uh, propaganda that has been used to help mold you uh, into seeing black people a certain way. And, and that's, what, that's what this country has done. And not only with black people, but with white people, with Native Americans, with Spanish people. They put these images and they put these different stories together, whether it be an art form or in the news. They pick and choose what they will share with you. And they will make it so that you fear before feeling. And that's what we need to get up off of. Again, there's good and bad everywhere. There's demons and, and angels everywhere. And they may not always be as conventional as just being able to understand it as you see it. We all love to make things easy for us to, to understand and for us to swallow a palate. We try to get to a point where we try to identify things, label things so they're easy for us to understand what we're looking at. But the reality is things are complicated sometimes. Sometimes you're looking at people who will change their mind, people flip-flop, people uh, come to different conclusions like I did from a child to a grown man about who I am, about who my people are. Uh, it's a lot of different things. Sometimes people just flat out lie. You know, it's, this is what it is. You cannot make life easy and identifiable for yourself as it pertains to the identities of people around you. You got to have real conversations. You got to sit down with people or you, you just have to accept the fact that there are some things that you're just not going to learn. But what, what people end up doing going wrong is blocking their blessings by a labeling individuals that they do not know, getting off to a bad start with those individuals, then walking away from those bad situations and having an understanding or misunderstanding about who they believe everybody is based on those interactions. And I think that, that, that I have a couple people close to me, I'm not gonna name them on here to embarrass them, but there are some people that I know extremely close to me that do not do well uh, in, in trying to, to, to deal with the chaos of, a, of, a, of not being able to identify what it is in front of them. You know, I, that's one of the reasons why one of my relationships did not work out because 
she did not hear that when I would try to have that type of conversation with her. Like, yo, not everybody's like that. Just because you've seen that person do that thing does not mean they do what you saw. And she, she, doesn't, she doesn't buy that. She will not open her heart or mind to what it is that I'm saying. If they, who she saw did what they did, everybody did that. And I just, I'm not that type of mindset. I don't have that. I don't even have patience for that type of opinion. So it, it, it drove us apart. It really did. It kept me from being close to her as a friend, even after the relationship was over. I just, that energy I can't get with, you know, and, and I get offended by it. I, especially the way my brain works, I get extremely offended by it because I'm like, I, I'm trying to not necessarily make life easy for me in terms of identifying the people around me. I'm trying to make sure that I'm reminded that it's impossible to do so. And, and to not, I fight with myself every day trying not to make this a, a color issue. And then luckily enough for myself, I'm, around, I'm surrounded by people that remind me through their actions that this is not a color issue. Uh, because it's easy to fall into that and there are millions and millions of people who have fallen into that simply because they don't have anybody saying what I'm saying to you right now. Which is you don't have to feel that way and there's no solution there. You are not going to be right when you label everyone. You're going to be wrong. You're going to find a few choice individuals who will back up your play by displaying the worst of themselves. And maybe even if you get lucky, they'll claim to speak for everyone. But the reality is they do not speak for everyone. And they are not displaying themselves in a way that represents their people well. And you should not buy it. You shouldn't buy it. Don't buy that individual's example of who their group is because they don't represent everybody. And if they run into the right person within their group, they will be shunned and, and shamed quite a bit for whatever it is that they're doing wrong. So it's, it's one of those situations where when you get that, when you understand that, you don't try to continue that process of labeling people. You don't try to continue that process of blanketing uh, different labels over entire groups. And you certainly don't convince yourself that racism and bigotry makes any sense whatsoever. Because it does not. It, 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 the logic falls apart. Even for the most scholar, smart, well-read individuals, when they start applying racism to their, their ideals, somewhere they find themselves accepting parts of their situation that just simply doesn't add up. They live comfortably within the confusion or the unanswered questions that come with certain parts of that situation that just aren't going to add up. And uh, that's not a good thing. So that's a bad thing. It's a road that will lead you away from, um, from, from the truth, from the simple and utter truth. And I think a lot of people claim to want the truth, claim to the desire to be a part of a, 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 a being outside of the matrix, so to speak. But when it's time for them to accept the fact that certain things are not as simple as being able to look at them and identify what you're seeing. And that sometimes you're just going to have to trust certain things. You're going to have to make yourself vulnerable in certain situations and leave open the fact that this could go right or wrong in order for you to receive it purely. Um, so many of us use our defensive mechanisms, whether it be uh, conscious or subconscious these these mechanisms sometimes they they, they defect they, they 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 work in a way that works against us uh, we do so much of trying to protect ourselves that we put ourselves in corners and I think that's what a lot of this is fear fear of change fear of what the world will look like if you don't have what it is that you're used to having fear of what of things getting worse if you no longer have power or whatever the case may be privilege or whatever you're afraid of being put through what it is that those who are complaining are being put through that's what a lot of people in, in, in this in this world are worried about particularly uh from what i've seen you know listening to people who oppose my position as it pertains to this current situation it's just like yo they're more so afraid than they are determined we're determined to change they are afraid and that determination is, is driven by that fear. And they are not, in some cases, able to even identify that within themselves. And uh, I think, I, I personally think racism, bigotry, and all of that, it stumps your growth as a, as a spirit. It stumps your growth as a person. And ultimately, it will stump the growth of the reputation of your community. It may not stump the growth of individuals in your community who don't adapt to it. But then again, when you look at this person 
from who represent a certain group and they come from that space if you're not intelligent you're not able to look through all that stuff that i've been explaining for the last 20 minutes you're going to label them exactly what it is that you see and uh, unfortunately a lot of us are just not analytical enough or, or don't care enough or too distracted to uh, do the critical thinking to just look at people and say okay let me give this person a chance to show me who they are and uh, you know some of our opinions are so divisive that you don't even want to and and that's that's also a way to block your blessing so yeah that's something i've been thinking about man i i, I wanted you guys to know that even though i'm on this super super black lives matter mission you must understand that the origin of my background uh, is not that of someone who grew up in a household full of black kids and black family all over the place. Like, I have a huge black family, but I didn't grow up around it. You know, it was just me and my, my single mom growing up in a little apartment in Hollywood. You know what I mean? And she did the best she could with me. She brought me around her family, but everybody was up north in Oakland. So I'd go up there once a year, twice a year, come back down and continue living my life away from my people that's up on Sundays when I go to church. So uh, my, my understanding of who we were was a misconception. My mother tried to help me through that. You know, she didn't harbor any of those concerns at all. She grew up in a household with black people on the on, you know, community and all of that, with everybody around her um, being African-American. And, and, you know, she understood, obviously, <laughs> what I hadn't yet to, to, to figure out. But... And she, she helped, you know, she really, my mom tried to help me with that, but it was, it was really, really hard in the first say, 11 years of my life. Just, just completely being anxious around my very own people, completely feeling like I didn't fit in um, when it wasn't even the case. That literally was not even the real situation. I was just perceiving it that way based on the lies that were fed to me about who we were. So, and I know that those lies have been fed to you as well if you grew up in this country, these images, or even beyond, just in this world. Um, and, 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 and you must understand that a lot of that stuff we did not earn on our own. Uh, it was hatred, racism, and bigotry that instilled that, that desire to, 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 to control our character. Um, they wanted to control every aspect of the African American so that we would not do what it is that we've ultimately found ourselves doing today, which is rising up and having, having some, some say so in what happens to us. They wanted to control our minds and bodies to such a way and, and the narrative surrounding us just in case if we were to get free, they could tell everybody not to trust us and we wouldn't be able to rise anyway, which is what they've effectively done. So I want everybody who's watching my video to understand and do your own research. Do not take my word for it. Um, I'm not the smartest individual in the world. You may be smarter than me, but I'm giving you something as, as it pertains to a perspective. And what, what you do with that perspective is your business, but this is real perspective. I am I'm telling you that this is what I've experienced in my life. This is what I've seen my whole life. I'm an analytical mind. I put things together very well. They've been telling you that we're something that we're not, and they haven't been telling us who, what they know about us. Um, and and that's a big deal. It's a big deal. A lot of us are running around, um, whether educated or not, without any real understanding of who we are. And we use the images, the same images that you see that make you fear us or make you hate us. We are using those same images to identify ourselves. And when we do so, sometimes if those images shame us so much, we'll try to distance ourselves from our own people without ever questioning, just like you, who we are. And that's where you get a lot of individuals who grow up in resentment situations where they hate black people, but they're black themselves. It's because they grew up with that, that, that problem that I had up until I was about 11, and they didn't have anybody help them get out of it. And those interactions that they had with African-Americans started off bad, just like I described about 10 minutes ago. Those interactions would be bad. And they would walk away feeling reassured that their, their position on their people is true. Not knowing what was what was going on there so um i just feel for fortunate enough to be enlightened enough to understand this uh and, and have been taught well enough to know that these things have taken place and now to try to unlearn as much of that as possible so that i can view myself properly and view the people around me uh with a clear mind without the the sc scourge scope of of um of the propaganda or what have you uh that has been shown to me for so long so yeah man yeah you gotta unlearn all of this stuff that you 
that you believe you understand about African Americans, uh, please, please, please do your due diligence. And understand this, there are individuals, probably more than enough, who will reinforce these, um, these stereotypes, as I've said many times. So just because you see some people who reinforce those stereotypes, do not forget that there are individuals out there who do not. Lots of them. Lots of them. And they love and they care and they, and they stand up for what matters to them and they're individuals. So try your best not to label them. Um, try your best to, to understand that you can't make it easy on yourself uh, by saying, I know what I'm looking at because I've seen something that looks like it and that's what they did. No, it doesn't work. Thank you guys for listening. My name is BDF. I'm out.